Oh. Hello, hello, hello. I can hear... Hello, you. everybody. I can hear me. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the weekly podcast where we cover all of the top week's news in Maker Robotics Games Arcade Esports and Surrogate News. It is 3 p.m. here in Espo, Finland. And what? What are you signaling? No, I, I am hearing you somewhere else. Yeah, because they have it blasting on their laptops. Can you... We hear ourselves. It's on your laptop. Or on your, somewhere on your side. It's, from your side. it's your phone. Is it here? Okay. Yes. Sorry, everybody. Anyways, <laughs> oh, we're here. It is 3 p.m. in Finland. This is episode six of the Ninja Robot Podcast. So what are we talking first? All right. So in this week's top news that I could find, it's been a kind of a political week. So there's not so much tech news, but I did find something interesting. Uh, Panasonic is, let's see if this will, yes. Panasonic makes a vacuum gadget to rescue wireless earbuds from the train tracks. Um, nearly a thousand earbuds, earbuds were dropped in three months in Tokyo. Panasonic is working on one of the with one of the biggest Japanese railway companies to solve a new problem that has sprung in the recent years. People are dropping wireless earbuds on the train tracks. JR East, the part of uh, Japanese formerly private railway group, blah 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 blah, in Tokyo, there were 950 incidents of dropped earbuds across 78 Tokyo train stations um, in the in the year. So. And to combat the issue, Panasonic has been partnered with Jer to make this uh, vacuum cleaner just for earbuds. And you can see there's the earbuds on, being sucked up by that dude's it, vacuum cleaner. It looks like a normal, uh, not a room Dyson vacuum cleaner. No. Yeah, but it's specifically but, for earbuds. But what is the problem? Like, it Look goes, at that. It, but it goes on a rail, right? And what's the problem? Doesn't just the train cra crash the earbud and that's it? No, they want to save them, of course. Oh, so they... But people want to get their earbuds. Ah, so they want to get them back. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, it's not that they're worried that it's going to crash the train. I was, you know, I was thinking of those GTA uh, compilation videos where, like, they try to stop the train and they put, like, a car, right. a spaceship, every, no, and just, just the earbuds. train just goes forward. Like... Why would earbuds break something? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I guess it's been a big issue. People are sitting next to it. Everybody has wireless stuff now, and they fall onto the train tracks. And uh, they're like, oh, no, I bought right earbuds. So now this guy can come by. And apparently they used to have, like, the traditional trash picker things to pick up earbuds, but they don't pick up them so well. So the guy's probably fumbling with air. Yeah, I guess they're AirPods. so small. Yeah, like so now they teamed up with Panasonic to make a vacuum cleaner just for your earbuds when you... Out of your ears. Patent pending technology, most likely. No, nope, no, nope, that's that's the that's the biggest this tech is news this week. The future <laughs> we live in. But uh, yeah, so let's move on to the next topic of news. The first topic, and that is maker news. What All are right. they making? In maker news, uh, what we do is we try to highlight the top makers of the week that we saw, um, and in this week we have. This person here named Akaki Kumiri. We've covered him before. He did some interesting things on controllers. And here he made a DualShock flight simulator yoke. Aircraft control interfaces can be divided by a sticker yoke. And he made some 3D printed adapters to his PlayStation DualShock controller. And he can build a complete cockpit just using a normal... Like he's actually controlling like a normal uh, PlayStation controller with 3D printed joysticks on it. This is um, pretty cool. Yeah. Is, it, is it like an open source 3D print design or? Uh, I think so. We should definitely print this one. I think it's, I don't know. I think it's pretty useful. Like I can definitely relate because buying, buying, buying one of those actual controllers is pretty expensive. But if you can just transform your Xbox controller, that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not, it, it doesn't actually say where to get the file, but I have an assumption that he probably made this open source because the other one he did was open source. And it's mostly 3D printed, just some rubber bands to provide springs. And then you just, it clicks right into your desk and controls the normal PlayStation controller. Man. It's pretty cool. Because the uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Yeah, look at it right there. You can see the, the, the whole setup. The, the Star Wars Squadrons came out a couple of weeks ago. So I think That's it's perfect. True. You just print perfect your timing. controller. 
Yeah, he's using it for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but uh, yeah, you could use it in a lot of things. That's pretty dope. Yeah, so you can check that out on Hackaday is where I found that. Next, uh, in maker news, this is more of a at-home sort of makers. We saw Mordecai, TGC Fabian, and Proco create their own experiences here on Surrogate TV, the website that we run. Uh, Mordecai hooked up his Nintendo Switch and, and did Smash Brothers. And you can check that out on the left there. And then Fabian uh, hooked up some LED arrays and you can program them to however you want over the internet and come up with some cool pictures and post them on the community. And then Proco made a game uh, where you can roll dice. Yes. And this is the first time we see creators publish their games on Surrogate TV using yeah. our SDK and following the documentation. So it's pretty, pretty exciting for us to see first game creators coming up to Surrogate TV and showing their games. Yeah, and up here you can see, I, I put the little green arrow, on our site, if you want to become a creator, it is now open for application. So um, in the beginning, we need a, some minimal skill sets in Python. Yeah, but I can... uh, besides that, um, just sign up and we'll, we'll, get, we'll reach out to you anyway. And, and for and those who out. are listening to the podcast, it's on the website, top right corner. Yes, it's on the picture here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say about it? But yeah, make sure to sign up. Uh, if you, for Also, if you don't know how to code yet, or you're not the most skilled code, coder, but you have an idea for a game, make sure to sign up as well, because later we will be letting people who maybe aren't most skilled technical people also create their own games very easily. So at least we can have you in the list already. And when we're at that stage, we will let you know uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, we're just making the tools easier and easier. And in the beginning, it's more advanced, and then it's going to get easier to just anybody who can create their own games. But if you tried a Raspberry Pi, making a project with Raspberry Pi before, and you know the most basic Python, you can make a game yourself, especially if there's a game template that fits you. Yeah. So let's uh, move on to our next topic of news, and that is robotics news. And the top robotics news of this week that I could find was dealing with Walmart. They have given up on using robots. So it was originally planned that they were going to use uh, robots to stock the shelves and, you know, do stuff like uh, put products in certain places in the store and they were going through all of this testing with it and it's all easy and fast and reliable and here's the robot and they apparently they gave it up they're not going to use these they're going to continue to use their employees um for now at least did they explain the reason like what was the issue they were having um the, apparently they found better ways to check stock and according to the quote on wall street journal's article about the decision shoppers reacted negatively to sharing the aisle with a machine Interesting. Wow. but couldn't they just use robots at night like or does walmart work 24 7 or something walmart's 24 7 okay um the robots didn't just check stock they could also check prices and find misplaced items and uh i don't know i think it sounds pretty good eventually they're it's gonna be normal but I guess maybe right now it's too early, or, or these are probably too expensive. Uh, I have no idea how much these cost or how reliable they are. So there's a lot of things we don't know in the background. But you can see here, it's uh, it's got super, some high-res camera, LiDAR, 4G connection, or Wi-Fi sensors, and just a box that I mean, holds it all together. The the product itself is pro is not that complex, right? You just draw out kind of the map of the mall, of the store, and you just let the robot drive around it. It's not that complicated, but maybe maybe you're right. The, the pe people are just not ready for it just yet, or the tech, because the tech doesn't look that expensive. Maybe this specific robot just costs a lot somehow. I don't know. It's it's made by Bossa Nova Robotics, and we don't, again, we don't know what the, what's the, What's happening in the background or, or why they stopped using it uh, on this article it also says that walmart continues to use other robots though notably a qr barcode floor mopper that locates themselves kind of like a roomba i guess that mops the floor and of course they have the cash counters and uh blah 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 but uh yeah you can uh, check this out i got this on hackaday and you can read more about it um if that is interest to you in the retail space. 
All right, and next in robotics news, this week, uh, building walks with robot legs. What? So it's like from an anime movie or something. Yeah, look at it. Uh, the Shanghai Evolution Shift Company has just pulled off one of the most impressive robotics projects we've ever seen, making a building walk using 198 robotic legs. We've all seen structural relocation documentaries where large buildings are moved to new locations. Uh, usually you have to jack it up and then you have to drive it around. But in this one, they can just walk buildings. It's a 7,600 ton elementary school, uh, five stories tall. It took 18 days for the building to walk 62 meters, rotate 20 to 21 degrees, and then stay in its new home. Uh, it's pretty crazy. But what is the like the use case? Like, because they, they didn't move, move it, buildings, but they didn't move it too much, <laughs> right? Like, I would get that. Hey, you build it somewhere far away, and then you just move it to the location. But I could imagine if they wanted to expand the school and it wasn't in a good location, but they didn't want to demolish it, so um, you move it to like the corner of the yard. Yeah, and that makes build sense. Build a new one next to it. That makes sense. So I guess there's utilizing the space better. Maybe is, and I maybe in China it's a big thing where they have to move. They'd like to move buildings, <laughs> and then utilize the space to build a skyscraper. Or something. I mean, actually, if you want to make a highway, you know, you don't want to demolish. Like you make a bigger road, you don't mm. want to demolish the how the building. You just move it a bit, and there's an extra line. Maybe. 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 I don't know. Um, but yes, that concludes our robotics news of this week. We are going to move on to the next topic of news discussion, and that is gaming news. G -g -g games. <laughs> All right. Uh, gaming company Capcom hit by a cyber attack. The developer of popular video game franchise took a swift action to prevent the attack from spreading further across its systems. Japanese video game developer Capcom has disclosed that it was a victim of a cyber attack that affected uh, some things. The publisher of a long list of franchises like Street Fighter and Resident Evil uh, first noticed signs of the intrusion on Monday before apparently taking action. Uh, beginning in the early morning, morning hours of November 2nd, some of the Capcom Group's network experienced issues that affected certain systems, including email and file servers. Um, Is there any specific thing they were trying to get? Does it mention? It, it, it seems to be sensitive information about players. Okay, so like passwords probably and usernames, I'd yeah. assume. Uh, in another article I read about this that said, it said a lot more than this. It was like the original one that came out. But it said more that there was a ton of sensitive information on gamers that was released that they didn't announce how bad it was. Okay. So it, it, there's the story is still developing on this, um, but it seems that they're doing all they can to to stop the spread of all of this information that got taken. Yes. All right. And the next on gaming news this week. Watch Dogs Legion, a politically minded video game where you start the revolution. It goes on sale on Thursday and promises to be one of the biggest game releases in 2020. It's a game where you can play nearly anyone in a dystopian London and it could sell as many as 10 million copies, analysts predict. Um, Have you seen the screenshots of that game? It looks pretty cool, like the graphics are amazing. Yeah, I mean, this, this looks really good. Cyberpunk looked really good. I like this style. This like nighttime, neon, bright color sort of style, dystopian. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Let's see. I I don't know. I think I played the first. Have you played the first Watch Dogs? No, I didn't. I didn't kind of, kind of reminded me of Mr. Robot, the TV series a bit. Because, you know, you, okay. you get to hack stuff all the time. But I don't know. Maybe It wasn't a, a cup of, uh, my cup of tea somehow. There's always like huge hype around that game because it does look good. And yeah, the game plan. But the problem, especially with the first one, was it was such a laggy game. People didn't want to play it anymore. Oh, okay, so it's like hmm. too. So the FPS was low. You mean? Yeah, it okay. was just I. On top of that, there was like other issues. They just couldn't make it work. So I think I don't know how long they've been working on this one. It looks epic, the game plan, and everything. But I don't know. Have to see if it's going to be successful, like the game itself, if it's going to work. Well, we'll see, of course. Uh, but it's. Apparently, there's a ton of unique characters you can play. Even the British rapper, rapper Stormzy is in the game. Wow. And nice. uh, Stormzy starts the you revolution. You get arrested and killed and all kinds of stuff in this game. But anyways, the, the game looks really cool. It's coming out on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Especially since it's politically minded. This week is very politically minded, at least in the U.S. 
All right, so let's move on to the next topic of news, and that is arcade news. This week, Sega's Sammy uh, to quit, decided to quit the game market business in Japan. Sega Sammy Holdings said Wednesday will pull out of game arcade operations in Japan by the end of the year amid a fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. The Japanese company will sell 85.1% stake in Sega Entertainment, uh, a subsidiary that operates amusement facilities to Genda or Genda Inc., an arcade game rental firm. Uh, Sega Entertainment is the third largest amusement facility operator in Japan. The sale comes as its game arcades have been struggling due to closures caused by the pandemic. It will book... They booked 20 billion yen in losses in the year. How and much is that in euros or dollars, I wonder? Let's see. What, 100 yen is like a euro? 20... Something like that. 20 billion or, or million. 20 billion yen Whoa. in losses. Genda will take over about 200 game arcades that Sega Entertainment runs across the country. I read in another article That's, that it's they're still going to be called Sega like arcades. So if you go to Japan, you can still visit a Sega arcade, but they're going to be run by uh, this Genda company. But Sega is stepping out of the arcade business in, in Japan. It's nearly $200 million. That's crazy. That's how much they lost. But when I went, I, I used to live in Japan for less than a year. And the arcades were packed. Okay. And then if all of a sudden no one's going, I can totally... And they have so many arcades. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy I'm sure they were hit really hard how this, on this year affected the arcade business. Yeah. You want to... Elaborate more? Yeah. Um, I don't know why. What <laughs> happened this year? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. Do you really want me to... <laughs> Enlighten you. Yeah, it's okay. such a weird time. Like economies are doing bad. Like what's going on? I don't right? understand. Yeah, I don't understand. Complete this. Been I, I went outside and today. Shambles. Everybody's wearing masks. I don't understand this. Everybody's like working from home. What is yeah. this? So know. many questions, no answers. I, 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 don't, I don't watch TV or go on the internet just for these news. So I don't know what's going on. All right. Next in uh, arcade news this week, Bandai Namco unveils a new cabinet for Mobile Suit Gundam: Bonds of the Battlefield Two. It is a game where you can play as a full-size Gundam. And in this new arcade cabinet they made, it's three 43-inch size screens. Makes you feel like you're inside of the robot. And versus this curved screen, apparently, they used to have on these Gundam arcades. Wait, wait, but do you sit inside? Like, do you yes. sit on a chair or do you actually, like... Well, that's the chairs right there. Okay. It's a chair. Because I thought maybe you strap yourself somehow, your legs and hands, and then you just, like, move the right arm and then the... Gundam arm moves, something like that, no? Hmm, that would be interesting. But I don't think that's how they control what Gundams, was that movie? though. You remember Pacific Rim? Yeah, or, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but but no, Gundams don't do Look, that. They even have two seats. Stuff. It's perfect for one part and the other part, like in Pacific Rim, the movie. <laughs> yeah, but this is Gundam. And I don't think these are coming to anywhere else besides Japan yet. But it uh, looks pretty cool. Cool little... It, looks, it reminds me of those Vegas gambling machines. <laughs> They try to keep you in the game and immerse three big, you. Yeah, immerse you in the game and flashing lights everywhere. And you're like, I'm gonna put more money. But this is a coin op game, and uh, and it also takes these cards that you can just tap to play. So of course they're trying to get your money when you're in the arcade. But anyways, that looks cool, and that's that ends our arc, uh, arcade news this week. We'll move on to the next topic of discussion, and that is esports news. It's like sports, but it starts with an E. It's like E. Sports. It's like electronics. It's weird. Whoa. I don't know what it means. It's, it must be electronics. Like iPhone. You sure about means that? Means what? Intelligent phone. Does it? <laughs> no, I think it was internet, wasn't it? <laughs> Information phone. Was it? No In idea. Inquisitor no, phone. I felt like it was internet. Interrupting. Esports is definitely electronic sports. Inspector phone. <laughs> Epic sports. Epic pods. Okay. <laughs> EPO. Well, that was iPod. Okay. Anyways, this week in esports news, the mayor of London backs esports campaign to tackle youth unemployment. The mayor of London. I put the question mark. <laughs> I, the, the thing wasn't. A, it was just there was no exclamation at the end. 
<laughs> the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has force, joined forces with esports organization LDNUTD for an initiative ba- aimed at tackling youth unemployment in the capital. Uh, the LDNUDT esports championships, according to press release, will facilitate competition between young Londoners. Moreover, the initiative will use esports and education to combat the rising rates of youth unemployment. Uh, young people in Hackney, Kingston, Lambeth, and Lewisham will be able to register for various digital workshops hosted in partnership with the University of London, a school known for offering specialized esports degree courses, as well as the University of Salford and University of East London. The digital workshops will focus on a range of topics, including video editing, social media management, and graphics design. The initiative will also offer insights for special guests like the renowned FIFA competitor Fazi Klan Tassel Tas Rushen, who has 270,000 YouTube subscribers and won, wins a bunch of money on FIFA. And uh, the mayor of London said the growth of esports over the past 12 months has been considerable. The industry is generating millions of pounds for our economy as well as creating much needed jobs for the community, particularly here in London. With that growth comes a level of responsibility, and I'm proud to say Sports Unite's program is able to help fund LDN, UTD, and organization using the platform. I have so many for questions. E-sports. Shoot. How how do you grow an economy by esports or like by sports? That's why I, had, I added a question mark in the beginning. Mayor of London backs esports campaign to tackle youth unemployment? Because what comes to my head is like, dude, it's. It's it's more useful to have than a class where people just watch ads and they scroll through ads constantly because at least then you get paid for it constantly. Yeah, like I was looking through the article and I was looking for something about how they're going to not be unemployed anymore. Instead, it's go play some games and uh, Maybe, London, but the I, mayor of London is like, the industry is generating millions of pounds for our economy. But I can't. I, I mean, I can see the logic is like they maybe check the surveys. You know, there's like some reports that they they ask kids what do they want to become, and before it was like I want to become a fireman or a astronaut, and now it's like I want to become a YouTuber. I want to be ninja. Yeah. So maybe they were like, okay, let's make that true. Let's make let's give people the power to become a ninja or whoever else. But yeah, but that's uh, that's kind of like giving the power to become a rock star. Yeah, and that's like. Well, it doesn't. But, uh, but I guess it's probably around like the esports championships, and of course, there's jobs that have to be done there. Like it said, with uh, like video editing and social media management and graphics design. So these are things you can use in other places, not just esports. But maybe this is like a nice incentive for kids to get into that, or yeah, maybe gamifying unemployed for people to get these skills somehow. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Um, next in esports news this week. The One Esports in Moonton Unveil Mobile Legends Professional League Invitational. One Esports, the esports venture of sports media company One Championship, has joined forces with the Chinese game developer Moonton to unveil Mobile Legends Professional League Invitational. The tournament will see 20 Southeast Asian teams compete on the Mobile Legends Bang Bang title for a share of a hundred thousand dollar prize pool question is this game cooler than the farm simulator i don't know i'd rather go to a farm simulator esports but competition it, this game is like this uh, i don't know what bang bang is this Have mobile you this yes so okay. it's kind of like league of legends for mobile mm. uh but I was always wondering, like, why did they put that bang bang at the end? Because right. they also have it in the logo, but they always hide it. Okay. They always hide it everywhere. And I think it's maybe related to copyright or something that somebody copyrighted the, or the trademark of Mobile Legends. And now they had like Mobile Legends bang bang. And that's why in the logo they have it, but they, it's like very transparent or li- you don't really okay. see it. But I also thought maybe it's like for the store, like App Store. So you write bang bang and you find that game. Uh. I don't know. It sounds. It that definitely sounds like some Asian thing. Maybe. I don't think anybody in the West is going to call it like that. Mobile Legends Bang Bang. But it's going to be interesting what's going to happen with this game because uh, League of Legends is bringing this mobile Rift game to mobile. Mm. So they're going to have their own official uh, game. And this is kind of a clone of League of Legends for mobile. So let's see what happens with gotcha. Mobile Legends. It's going to be interesting. Gotcha. All right. Well, yeah. If you're interested in checking that out, uh, they're gonna have that esports tournament soon with the Mobile Legends Bang Bang. All right. So now let's move on to the next topic of news this week, and that is surrogate news. Surrogate. 
All right, all right. As said already, I'm just going to reiterate it. Our players, our uh, creators on the platform at Surrogate have created these experiences. You want to go check these out. They're on the homepage um, from Mordecai, TGC, Fabian, and Proko at surrogate.tv. And of course, at the top, there is that button where you can click to become a creator if you want to create your own real life game. Um, in this week's news, as you saw in the last weeks, we launched Mario Kart's live home circuit so you can play it online from here in Finland, controlling it through your computer. You don't need to own a Switch. You don't need to own a Mario Kart, but you can control ours and race against other people. But this week we did uh, a charging station in a stand if you want to say something about it. Yeah, so we've been prototyping this charging station uh, for some time and we can finally show you how it looks. Some of our, our Patreon supporters saw it a couple of days before already. But basically the idea is that you can park the Mario Kart and then there's this magnetic cable that automatically connects to the Mario Kart and starts charging it. The only trick we also have to do is also turn off the Mario Kart. So we have an extra... Uh, actuator, or is it an actuator? A, a, motor, servo. a servo motor that kind of goes and presses that button to turn off the Mario Kart and it starts charging. And then when somebody wants to drive that kart, you can just press stop charging on a, on the website and it like takes out the magnetic cable so it stops charging and then turns on the car itself. And we are able to continue driving. Yeah, so currently we have to do these manually. We, we plug them in manually, but with this system, we just drive them down this sort of a train track, slot, rail, to the spots and they will charge themselves. Yes, the idea with this prototype and the whole concept is so that not only us have to be physically here in the office to maintain the game, but also potentially one of you could host this game remotely over the internet and host the session. Same as some of our moderators currently host Sumo Bots. So every hour you can just drive the cards to charge, take out the new set and the game continues running for as long as there's somebody online maintaining it. Yeah, and this will all be open source and will allow you all to, if you want to hook it up yourself, stay tuned. We're going to release all of this stuff, all this information for you. Next in surrogate news this week, or actually it'll be next week, but we're going to give you a hint this week of a game we're going to launch and you got to try to figure it out based on this video. It is a, spaceship. a new spaceship. Okay. It's, it's spaceship. a spaceship. But it looks like a pinball machine. No, no, it's a spaceship. Uh, I'll play it one more time. For those listening, you can't see it, but we're showing a video of the internals of a pinball machine. And this is a sneak peek of a pinball machine we're going to be hooking up here on surrogate.tv. It's a Yoshi, Yoshi spaceship, and that's the internals. Okay. Well, that's a good guess. I'm Getting pretty sure. Okay, that's the baseline. 100%. Everybody can move in a direction better than that. Um, but yeah, so you can play this online at surrogate.tv soon. TM. Hopefully next but, uh, week. If you, if you want to know what it is, check out that video. Replay it a few times and then maybe you'll figure it out. And if you have any guesses what exactly it is, let us know on the Discord community. It would be great to hear what you think this game is. Yeah. The video is on our Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So, so pop a comment there as well. On our discord.gg slash surrogate TV. All right. In last week's uh, Robot Explorer, which is a hosted live event we do on YouTube every week and on our website at surrogate.tv, where we control a 4G robot over the internet and we drive it to different places. This week we went to uh, the downtown Helsinki and drove it around. Any, any moment there? Actually, so, first, first what we did is we actually carved a pumpkin because it was Halloween. We carved a pumpkin and we stuck it on top of an RC car. But first, I was carving a pumpkin live on uh, on YouTube here. And spoiler alert, Shane tried to put it on his head to see if it fits and it did not work out well enough. Yeah, but we, was... we cut Jeffman's face here, as you can see. <laughs> Jeffman, one of our players. This is his icon on the... You might want to elaborate that a little bit more if people don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jeff Men's so, face. Jeff Men's face. Is so it's here this. Uh, on the pumpkin. It's this emoji, you it's know, like emoji. a laughing, yeah. a smile. It's his profile picture on um, on Discord, Discord and on yeah, Surrogate TV. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I tried carving out this thing, and as you can see here, it was super heavy. Like we we were like, crap. How do we get more weight out of this pumpkin so it'll actually drive around on the streets? Um, so we just kept cutting and cutting and cutting. And yeah, eventually I just hacked almost the entire pumpkin apart. 
and it it worked. So then the what was it? The day after or the two days after? Two days after. It was on Wednesday. We went and drove it out on the streets, and we got some good, good uh, reactions. Alex, he took it all the way to Helsinki in his car. Then we started driving our pumpkin around in the under the underground. We started meeting people on the streets. We lost connection. We once. lost connection for a couple times because of uh, the buildings. No, when we flipped, that's when we lost the connection. Oh yeah, we flipped this bot, but the pumpkin didn't break amazingly. And uh, we even got somebody on Instagram, some famous girl. Oh, that's on the Instagram. best moment. We were hanging out with a doggo. Very yeah, I got a clip of that later that someone took. So yeah, there was. Anyways, uh, there was. Uh, there was a lot of stuff happening. The pumpkin did not break because even though it didn't flip, because it didn't take a direct hit, so it didn't smash. Um, lots of people did stop to wonder what it is, take pictures, videos, Snapchats, whatever. Um, you guys were watching, thinking that I was running away from it, trying to, you know, not be embarrassed. That's but what it looked like. I was keeping a distance on purpose because I wanted people to kind of figure out what it is on their own and maybe approach it uh, rather than me have standing there. But then I also did kind of stand in the background sometimes so they knew that I was part of it and they could come up and talk to me, which happened. Like that little puppy who was going crazy. Um, and then there was that one lady who just directly came up to me and said, what is this? I think with her mom and uh, turned out she was like some famous, semi-famous. I'm not really sure. Yeah, that was sure. at the very end. Yeah, she's yeah. some songwriter, author person. Here in Finland. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So it was like 10,000 subscribers on her Instagram and she posted about it, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, followers, also, not subscribers. Or Yeah, sorry. On followers <laughs> on Instagram. Um, and then this last week, we only had a couple, or it was like one day of Sumo Bots. And the current top scores are as you see here uh all city is still in first place uh garfi has moved up from third to second and wilbur's is down from second to third and sutsaka is still in fourth so the way that this game works is you're controlling real robots over the internet here in finland and it's done on an elo system so you can jump in any time if you've never played the game before and start controlling and if, if you can just beat a couple of these guys at the top garfi wilbur's all city you could be at the top, and then we have the season two tournament ending very, very soon. That's right. Where I we have some big it's, prizes. It's five weeks. Five weeks till the end. Five weeks. Yep. Till the end of season two sumo bots, and there's some big prizes like you win your own robot, then you win some other stuff. Yep. Like a sumo bot replica. Okay, replicas and a real sumo bot. If we go to the top clips of the week, this one came in from Ryder Liangle, and it's. These on our uh, robot combat game, holding hands. You see them? <laughs> it was a sweet. It was a sweet moment in the in the uh, in the battle. Watch here. They're they're fighting. They're fighting. They're fighting. And then they're like, "Look at that! Look at that poster in the background. We are why friends. Why are we fighting? What? Yeah. Why we are we should fighting? Be friends. Look at the stars. Peace. Peace on the arena. So that's robot combat. You can check that out on Surga.tv. Another top clip of the week came in from Grimberg. Weird. There's a guy's right here in this office. <laughs> um, and this is another one where people are holding hands. This past week has just been so hum. Uh, what's the word? Y uniting, unifying. For, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, look at the top. The top. If you check out again, keep an eye on the top right and the bottom right. And they are going to come very close to each other, hold hands, and cross the line at the same time. So our robots tend to be very friendly. As you can see, we have a very wholesome community here. At wholesome. That was the word I was looking for. That was very so, wholesome. So if you're still not a part of the, our Discord community, make sure to check it out. It's at discord.gg slash We yeah. have more than 1.6 thousand members already. If you're watching, it's right there's the link. People holding hands, helping each other with different projects. But yeah, that was Mario Kart. So you can play that online right now. For, I just want to say, free. the person who gets closer to 0 0.04 seconds between each other, I want to see that happen. Please clip that. There was one that was even closer than this. Really? So yeah, someone clipped it on the uh, surrogate specific media. Um, another top clip of the week was that doggo that we saw when we were... And this was brought to us from Wilbur's. He clipped this um, where we drove up to this tiny little puppy in our pumpkin bot 
and he he was just he was super interested and then he wanted to play and he was started barking and it was yeah i see he's like laying down to play wagging his tail it was weird he was kind of he was very playful and, he was like, whoa, whoa, that's and crazy. afraid at the same time yeah it was really curious the dog but then every time the robot moved a little bit yeah got scared and, and it comes closer 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 and then it's like we move and it's like whoa, 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 whoa why are you moving but it, it, it's it's a fun fun moment uh People seem to enjoy the robots. It, it's just funny that in Finland, though, it's like people are so uh, kind of avoiding human interaction in all ways that they don't even they see a robot. You can see they're actually intrigued by it. But just to avoid having to talk to you or ask you anything, they'll they'll stare at it and keep walking. Mm. They won't stop and ask. What is it? I think there was a very mm. epic story on Instagram that Alexi captured from there, where there's like a robot passes the street on the green light and people just in their phones, like yeah. ignoring uh, it completely. Yeah. That was, that's literally, if you think about it, that is like the center of the epicenter of Finland, like the yeah. most busiest place in Finland it was during like the most weekdays. busiest streets. Yeah, that is point blank middle of Helsinki, our capital. Yeah. And nobody gave a damn. Yeah, we drove right <laughs> over a road Tons of people crossing on both sides, and no one even cared to look at a pumpkin driving past them. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> questions. It's, it's very weird. Only the young young people, like young kids, yeah. love it. Of course, the dog loved it. But the young kids love it, and they're like, oh, they were super interested. And then it starts a conversation that the older people are just like, uh, The pumpkin. hope is that one day we'll, pumpkin we'll find... Pumpkin is normal. We'll find one of our Robot Explorer videos or um, those experiments on TikTok one of these days trending or something. That's Maybe. the hope. Maybe. Like when we picked up Subway. I bet that's posted somewhere. I'm sure it is. Because that girl was uh, filming it. It must have ended up somewhere. Instagram or TikTok. Or... But yes, that is the end of the weekly Ninja Robot podcast. Uh, we covered, I think, all of the uh, news this week in games, robotics, esports, arcade, maker, and surrogate TV. It's... it's uh, been an interesting week not too much not, nothing's really getting launched in this past week because of the the whole politics thing so probably going to see a lot more big things happening in the next couple weeks ps5 xbox so many other exactly things. ps5 xbox series x they're all coming out when are they coming uh 19th uh people in uk are going to get them and then the us i believe it's 12th or 14th okay uh but yeah it's next next week so there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out there, a lot of great games coming out. So you're going to see a lot of cool screenshots, probably people playing it on the internet. So without any other comments, anything? We got that... some stuff. I wanted to talk okay. about Robot Explorer. Uh, next week, we're adding some new stuff to our robot. So, la uh, so this week, we tested the waterproof casing, which means that now we can go even if it rains, etc. But one thing we were willing to do all this time, but we still haven't done, is adding like a way to communicate. So we could actually, from the car, talk to the person and like actually community they could see us on the stream or like on the in the studio and we could actually talk to them so okay. next week we're adding a, a phone kind of to the car it will be in the front uh window of the car so i'll be able to communicate with other people so it's going to be interesting to see what will people think about us and if you have any ideas of what we should do next week uh make sure to give us suggestions on the discord community yes so you can find us everywhere at surrogate tv or go to our Discord, discord.gg slash surrogate TV, and join the conversation about current and future games that we are making and that you can make and you might maybe want to make and want to figure out more information about that. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of it. I'm Shane Allen. I'm Stan. You didn't say the man this Stan time. Stan the man. Weird. Stan the man. <laughs> He's been saying it the whole time before the podcast. He's well, like, I'm Stan the Man. Now, I'm Stan now everybody's man. pointing I'm out Stan to me. The man, I'm ready. Now everybody's <laughs> now pointing like, out Stan. to me, like, <laughs> Stan the Man again. And I'm thinking, maybe I should stop doing it. Let me know in the comments <laughs> if I should keep saying Stan the Man or is should I just say... Is he Stan the Man or is he not Stan the Man? That is the question. Answer that question in the comments below. Is he below. Stan and a Biggest man question or is he a man and he's not of Stan? of the week is, is Stan the Man? Yes. <laughs> yes. The well, greatest questions of humanity. <laughs> that is a great way to end, I guess, the podcast with this yes. very philosophical... And what, games, and what games do we have today? We have a 5 o'clock starting in, mm. in an hour. Yeah, we Mar got a Mario, Mario Kart. Kart starting in one hour and 10 minutes. We got uh, Robo Combat starting at 7 p.m. 
And once Robo Combat finishes, we will be back with Sumo Bots today, tomorrow, and on Monday. And the next week, sorry, we on got Sunday, hosted, Sunday. Yes, yeah, so the next week we have a hosted Sumo Bots tournament where you win prizes. We're so finally get your, get back. your uh, Get your uh, and small maybe skills on maybe small uh, uh, giveaway we might do for like the sumo bot since we haven't had t for two weeks our live stream so I'm thinking merch some merch maybe giveaway for well, the well if you have any ideas weeks. or preferences let us know perhaps 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 yeah let us know in the Discord but anyways thank you everybody for joining us this week have a great weekend I play some games we'll see you on the arena and we'll see you next week. Take Bye, care. everyone.